Thank you so much, everyone, first of all, for uh, joining me. And definitely, it's your last talk. So I'll try to keep as much as uh, demo or hands-on positive so that you will not get bored or like uh, uh, very much like not theoretical. So yeah, welcome back to Sans Cloud's uh, next summit. I've been presented Kubernetes code uh, quite back in the previous year, and it was pretty well received talk. So I thought, why not present it with more changes and updates? So to just get started, I think some of the very fancy things and favorite things one of them has been changed is the logo, right? And uh, now the Kubernetes code is kind of trying to not only just focus on uh, attackers or security point of view. So we would love to focus on other aspects of the, the security spectrum, right? Like how blue teams or defenders can leverage uh, Kubernetes security or even developers and DevOps so that a lot of security issues could be done quite early stages of the, the things, right? And uh, even there is a new shift I had to take this open source project, how it can even help the vendors, security people, right? Like uh, to test their product effectiveness. So there is a lot of cool updates. Uh, so that's why I think let's get right into it. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight some of the things uh, before moving on, what exactly is uh, 2022 edition, right? So as I mentioned, there is a, a very awesome fancy logo. And by the way, you see a lot of emojis throughout the presentation. I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of uh, great documentation. I think you see me right side, like a pretty great documentation has been updated in such a way that now Kubernetes can, uh, code can be leveraged in a way uh, more structure driven, like a story narrative, and also some kind of gamification, like giving some hints, spoilers, and some kind of walkthroughs, and uh, even some kind of specific uh, references and resources, right? And uh, there are a ton of uh, uh, various cluster set of configurations and a lot of scenario improvements towards other perspectives, like how they can leverage the Kubernetes security project, like the Kubernetes code, and uh, learn from that. And uh, quite a lot of improvements on like how new people can contribute to the project and whatever they learn or uh, wanted to give it back to the community, right? And uh, there are kind of the things I think we will definitely go through this uh, while we were driving. Like for example, cheat sheet, some of the new diagrams which will help you to explain and uh, explore. Uh, let's get that. Awesome. Uh, I think a bit about me uh, before diving. I work at Mira as a product security leader. Uh, I kind of created Kubernetes code and a bunch of other security tools and fortunate to speak and share knowledge across this conference. So like Black Hat, Def Con, GitHub, Shatlight, Usenix, and some of the other. Uh, yeah, apart from that, most of the time I work with communities and doing some kind of fun things and learning new things. So that's why you, you see me as a never ending learner. Uh, yes, uh, let's get into the Kubernetes code, right? Uh, if you're someone just getting started or hearing this first time, what exactly is Kubernetes code, right? I know about Kubernetes because it became a so much buzzword in the market, right? So Kubernetes code is uh, something came out of like a quite an interesting case. I've been working in containers and Kubernetes for quite a long time, uh, nearly 2016. So I said like most of my learnings, maybe I can share with the world, right? So one of the easiest ways security people learn is by playing with the labs or vulnerable applications. And uh, I thought, why not take the same approach and share the learnings of Kubernetes uh, into the world, right? So this project is basically intentionally vulnerable. It has a bunch of scenarios to showcase real world attacks, vulnerabilities, and common misconfiguration we see in day-to-day -day cloud native environments in a hands-on way, right? So that's the project about. Uh, so big disclaimers before we dive and uh, get into hands dirty, right? So this, as I mentioned, ton of intentionally vulnerabilities and there are a lot of attack surfaces there. So please do not try to deploy this in your production clusters or any sensitive infrastructure. Try to deploy this in a safe environment like test playgrounds or some of the places that you can try it out. And uh, make sure please uh, try to use these attacks and uh, the techniques we will be using and scripts and tools uh, more on educational purpose are like trying to test on a safe and uh, uh, like secure manner. Right. Cool. Uh, then, okay, now I know what is Kubernetes and I know some of the warnings, right? Can I get started or can I use this for my use case, right? So Kubernetes code is not just for certain people. So we kind of trying to focus on different perspectives and uh, end users, right? Some of them can include, if you are coming from security backgrounds, like who is doing pen testing and red teaming, there are kind of scenarios which you can go back and try out 
okay, I'm inside a container from there, what else I can do as an attacker? Can I go beyond certain uh, like lateral movement or can I go and gain cluster admin access or can I go even beyond that and gain complete cloud uh, compromise, right? Uh, if you are someone definitely coming from defenders or blue team detection, okay, this is a quite new area. Can I understand and detect container escapes? Or can I understand how API audit logging works, right? So there are some of the scenarios and things we'll focus on detection and uh, how they can leverage uh, these attacker techniques so that they can go back and work on their defenses, right? The biggest shift, especially with this release, is uh, trying to focus on how developers and DevOps team can leverage, right? And uh, products and vendors. The big reason being, I've been working in product industry and uh, most of the SaaS companies and enterprise world, right? Uh, the thing is, we can add scale with the developers and DevOps team because there will be 300 or thousands of developers, but you just have hardly five engineers or maybe 10 engineers in the security team, right? So some of the lessons I learned personally is uh, maybe I wanted to give it back saying that okay, maybe rather than we go and uh, fix or review the security issues like CACD pipeline or even maybe in the production before going into the, the deployment, right? Can I create and contribute back to the, the system, right? So what we do is we go and create our own health charts, which are by default are back secure, which by default has all the least privileges or whatever the security best practices. So developers or DevOps team create these things. So we basically contribute back or give back to them so that most of the security issues even fixed before they even create a template as microservice, right? So that's why we wanted to focus heavily on how developers and DevOps team can learn security as well so that they can fix a lot of things quite early stage, right? And the last phase is how products and vendors, right? So we have seen a shift in a lot of security vendors trying to come up with the new open source products or like projects or like even uh, commercial vendors, right? It's become pretty difficult for security engineers or non-security engineers or even business leaders to pick, okay, do I need to pick this right project or do I need to pick this right product, right? So we can leverage Kubernetes code as a test bed or to see can this product effectively work for these scenarios? Can they detect container escape? Can they detect certain use case? So this becomes a uh, battleground or like some kind of test ground for them to validate the effectiveness of the product so that product can improve and the open source tools can be improved and the people can make better decisions, right? So yeah, as I said, some new feel of the, the new edition. There is a lot of fancy UI UX changes also happen. Uh, so just skipping back, uh, there are a ton of scenarios we come up with. I think uh, these are some of the scenarios uh, which are part of them and 15 plus more scenarios releasing hopefully this week after the talk uh, soon. And uh, most of the scenarios just not focusing on security attacks point of view, we also wanted to focus on others perspective, which means defenders, how developers can focus on sensitive keys and code bases, or how uh, maybe blue team can detect these things, or maybe how vendors can detect these, right? So we wanted to focus on different aspects of each scenario so everyone can learn from this project and get something value out of it. Um, yep, I think we will be soon getting into hands dirty. Uh, just a few more slides. Uh, so how can I get started with the Kubernetes code? Okay, it looks fancy. I can learn a ton of things and there is so many things, right? Uh, there are so many ways we have improved right now. As I said, like in this release, we just not only supporting one thing, so we can deploy the Kubernetes code either in Kata Kata Playground because no one wants to deploy these kind of intentionally vulnerable clusters in your own cluster, right? So you can use a free online in browser, which means you can just click and play it right away. Or you can, if you have your own vanilla Kubernetes cluster, just go ahead and run try it. Or any managed cloud service providers like EKS, GKE, AKS, or even your developers can even leverage and trust and learn in these things and can write Kubernetes in it after time. Uh, there are some of the more things coming up, like especially how you can leverage and test this on edge devices or something like lightweight Kubernetes site with our market uh, So soon we will be releasing uh, k 3 as well. And uh, yeah, with that, which means you can go and try it out pretty much everywhere, right? Uh, to just get started, uh, I would highly recommend if you don't have time, and this is one of the biggest reasons most people just look at these tools and never give it a try, right? Oh, it takes so much time to set up or it may be very hard to go and uh, try out this thing. So we have created simple online uh, playground, uh, which is completely free. You just click on this URL and it'll take you to the browser and you can just set up and Kubernetes code in a matter of a seconds, right? 
So pretty much well documented. So I would highly recommend if you want to just give it a try and understand the project and how you can learn Kubernetes security, uh, this is the right place and you can get started. Right. Or, okay, no, I just want to leverage uh, more potential and understand what is actually happening, right? Maybe if you wanted to set up uh, in your own Kubernetes cluster, it's as simple as just downloading the Kubernetes code repository and uh, setting up this uh, Kubernetes code script and accessing it from this uh, endpoint, right? Uh, please do feel free to look at uh, the scripts and uh, code bases. It's completely open source and uh, available in the GitHub repository. So yeah, uh, happy hacking. So once you set, you should be able to see list of pods running in the Kubernetes code by running a kubectl get pods, which means list of pods available. Then, which means if it is all running and completed stage, you are good to go, right? So that's kind of pretty much uh, to get started. And once you see, you would be able to see this a new home page, which is basically showcasing the list of scenarios available and how you navigate across them and what you can play around or learn from them, right? Uh, so this is the updated documentation. So I will be quickly going through the, it uh, in a second, uh, but I just wanted to highlight if you have wanted to start by have a guided walkthrough or learn scenario step-by-step, step, you can always refer back to this documentation, which has detailed step-by-step -step information, right? So, sorry, uh, with that, uh, let's get into our demo and hands and stuff. Uh, I don't, definitely don't want to bore you with the slides. Uh, with Kubernetes code uh, demo time, because trust as always live demos, pray to the gods, right? So as I said, uh, if you are someone just getting started, head over to the Kubernetes code. Oh, this is quite interesting. We say potentially vulnerabilities. I hope this is a vulnerable repository so I can see some of them. Yeah, please give it a start if you haven't already. And uh, you can just get started with this guide, as I mentioned. Uh, as you see, this is completely new release, has quite a lot of fancy surfaces and uh, completely updated documentation, which you can see, right? Uh, I will just get started. Uh, if you want to read a bunch of other things like the architecture of the Kubernetes code and how it looks like as a very high level overview, this is definitely a uh, very uh, top level. If you go delve into each uh, of the scenario, you will understand a bit more context. Uh, as I mentioned, you can go ahead and try with this thing or any other platforms if you would like to test or try it out, right? Uh, and you can just get started with this thing, right? Uh, so uh, for the time being, I have already set up the Kubernetes code uh, in my local system. I'll just zoom in so that you can able to see the font properly. Yep, uh, it's all up and running. So if you are someone uh, already going to run, I also would recommend maybe you can try out using Katakura Playground. So you just need to launch and uh, run, make sure you can check the pods running. You can able to access the Kubernetes code project right away here. And uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. Oh, there you go. I think I, I thought I never made a mistake there, but I haven't pushed the new latest image with updated logo still you see this. Uh, yeah, after the fact, I'll be pushing the new latest image. As you see, this is a quite active project. <laughs> yeah, you can see a lot of mistakes, right? Cool, uh, this is the guide, as you can see, all the step-by-step -step scenarios and walkthroughs will be here. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to browse specific code in the Kata Koda, maybe you can even like uh, change the port and uh, browse it here, right? So that's kind of pretty much. Uh, let me go back and uh, get started here. So I just wanted to highlight a bit uh, uh, introduction part before even diving into the Kubernetes code. I see a lot of people coming from a uh, uh, security background, but they don't understand the technology. The huge drawback or like the gap between the security people and adding value to this modern infrastructure or modern ecosystem or cloud native is understanding the terminology, how the technology works. So I would highly recommend if you are someone just getting started, please head over to the Kubernetes and understand basic concept, what exactly it is, how we can run a simple pod or learn basic stuff, right? So these are some of the example documentation we have created and uh, referring to a very high level architecture, how it looks like and uh, some details. Uh, I would highly recommend check out this uh, children's guide to how you can learn about Kubernetes and some really good examples. I definitely wanted to highlight one of the things, uh, to be honest, uh, if you're someone definitely getting started, uh, they have really good learning paths. 
which means you don't have some even basic knowledge of contain uh, command line or Linux fundamentals or even container. So they kind of take you through step by step. So which is really good. Uh, so you can learn those basic concepts and come back and understand. Also, there are kind of uh, tutorials if you wanted to learn. So let's say, okay, you learned all the Kubernetes fundamentals. Now you wanted to head over to the security. So that's where you can get started. Uh, by the way, with this new release, there is a cheat sheet also, which is kind of what kind of basic commands you can leverage in a day-to-day -day cluster environment when security testing or looking at the things and stuff, right? Looking at Docker, Kubernetes, or in general, right? So this you can leverage as well. So let's get into the simple scenario, how it looks like, right? So I definitely don't want to go back and delve into all of the scenarios, uh, which is heavily documented. So you can go back and uh, learn about all of these scenarios uh, in a bit, but I just wanted to showcase on specific examples, right? How certain things can be happen uh, in a real world attacks and how we can learn from this. Uh, but I will quickly go through very high level how scenarios look like, and uh, I'll go back to the documentation, right? So each scenario now with the new section has a storyline and a very fancy diagrams, uh, which kind of trying to explain in a simplified way, okay, what exactly this scenario is trying to teach, right? So in this scenario, we wanted to look at sensitive keys can be exposed in code bases, right? So this is the very high level overview of what could happen and what are the, some of the examples and also very high level layer. Okay, sometimes even developers mistakenly uh, save our package, even Git commits or Git repository, which might have sensitive keys, right? For example, AWS access key or secret keys, right? So this is a very high level storyline and uh, how you can get started. So this is the entry point from there, maybe as an attacker, you might want to understand like, what exactly is my goal to achieve here, right? So the goal is this scenario is to identify sensitive keys available in code base, which includes maybe AWS access key, secret key, uh, there could be a very fancy character code flag as well, which is Kubernetes code flag, right? So if you are someone, okay, maybe I definitely wanted to try. I don't want it to go through solutions like a challenge, right? So then you can quickly look at the hints or uh, the spoiler section. So which is very high level uh, things like, okay, did you still looking at a website? Uh, you didn't find anything. Maybe you would like to try out like a linear special directories, like maybe use tools like GoBuster or GetBuster, right? These are small hints. So which make them to motivate and try out different ways, right? Some of the things, once they try, maybe they find like a Git directory, which has like a bare repository lying in the, in the code itself, right? So from there, uh, maybe you still stuck and you couldn't focus on furthermore, then how can you go back behind, right? Looking at version systems, how they maintain commits and stuff, right? So these kind of hints and uh, spoilers has been updated with all the scenarios so that you can go and play around things and uh, be challenging and competitive as well. And also in terms of walkthroughs, so there could be one possible method of solving this problem of uh, finding the security issue uh, or detecting in certain scenarios. So we wanted to uh, document them and how attackers can look at these things. This is where when I said like a defenders can leverage some of the things from this, right? So defenders can understand, okay, this is not only the way how attackers think, maybe there is a other possible way. So there could be a learning for them so that they can go back and apply best defense as possible in the, in the Kubernetes detection system, right? So for example, if you wanted to go through a step-by-step -step scenario, uh, like a, as a solution, you can walk through these uh, guided scenarios and uh, everything you can try it out yourself and uh, able to detect some of the things and uh, able to further exploit and understand things, right? So I'll quickly go through one example uh, solution uh, because I think uh, definitely we don't have so much time, but I definitely wanted to cover at least one scenario, right? So as for this scenario, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to understand any sensitive code available in the, in the pods or the containers, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to execute into a pod which is running in a Kubernetes cluster as to is part of the Kubernetes code, right? So if you see here, uh, we already logged into the, the container and uh, we can use tools like Truffle Hub because there is a code, which is a simple Golang code, but I see a GitHub uh, dot git repository. Maybe I can look at like old log commits and maybe go to specific commit and see if there is something interesting things could be there. Uh, but with a lot of commits and a lot of repositories, maybe you even wanted to use tools like Truffle Hub, right? Which kind of detects secrets in the GitHub repositories. Or there are a ton of tools like Git secrets or Git leaks, bunch of other things. 
So what truffle hub does is you kind of go through the commits and identify any potential high entropy values which are committed into this code base, right? Uh, looking at it, it is taking a bit of time. Uh, I hope it will be done soon. Uh, this is the problem with live demos. And uh, I love doing live demos. So let's hope demo gods will help us. And uh, this also, there is a section. Meanwhile, uh, uh, this is some of the examples how in real world these kind of things happen, right? For example, there is a ton of GitHub uh, secrets is potentially uh, available in Docker Hub, right? So there are kind of the examples in real world mapping to these uh, scenarios as well, right? Cool, looks like we have found our creators code flag and uh, AWS access key and secret key, right? Which means it's quite a potential damage if some attacker wanted to leverage these keys and again, just go and attack again as your cloud providers if these keys are working, right? So this is a simple example. Uh, how you can leverage and learn from these scenarios. As I mentioned, there are a ton of other scenarios and there is a lot of work went into it, especially for this uh, sand stock uh, with a lot of updates on the how they can easily consume an experience of learning, uh, like simplified way to document them in a diagramic way and telling a story in a narrative way, how they can learn the goals and things and things. And uh, there is a lot of other scenarios as well. So I would highly recommend give it a try uh, and learn how many different kind of perspectives and uh, soon there are more scenarios and uh, updates as well. So let's go back to, apart from scenarios, which are quite a lot of them, uh, to the security reports, right? So this is quite an interesting piece. Uh, so there is a lot of enterprises and companies also leverage products and open source tools to say, okay, we wanted to detect these issues as early as possible. Maybe in fail time, maybe in uh, IDE, like VS Code, linters or some of things. So what we are trying to do is using product uh, project like Kubernetes code, because it has ton of intentionally potential vulnerabilities, can we detect these issues and how effective these tools are, right? So we started looking at a bunch of other uh, open source projects, uh, like can this tool detect like what kind of vulnerabilities it is detecting? Oh, it is able to detect privilege escalation, which means it's quite good, right? So this is a test bed for a bunch of uh, products and vendors and even open source tools like check away able to detect so-and-so issues and is this many in Helm charts, right? And they recently we released with Cubescape, uh, can it detect for certain issues, how many of them are high, how many of them category. So this is a quite a lot of information valuable for the people when they're making decisions as well uh, from the perspective of the security, right? So there are a ton of new things coming, uh, especially in the scenarios perspective, uh, each uh, tools, how they can detect these as well and uh, how they can add value back to the community so that they can improve the effectiveness, right? Uh, that's pretty much, if you are someone just wanted to tear down the cluster, you can just go ahead and just try, or if you are using some uh, already set up cluster, you can just uh, close the window, that's it. You go all set for the thing. Uh, with this, uh, if you would love being involved, like we will happy to hear that, first of all, please do provide as much as valuable feedback because this entire new release of the thing came from the extreme feedback of previous SAM summit and bunch of other people on the internet uh, would love to grow this project and they had created a valuable feedback and uh, there is a ton of work still going on. Uh, and also a lot of developer documentation is coming so that you can even contribute your own scenarios and use cases back to the project to give back to the community as well. Right. Uh, there is a Discord channel coming soon, so I uh, still work in progress as I said, it's quite active. And uh, there are some other showcase. If you got benefited or adopting Kubernetes code in your project, it can be even a security vendor or a company or learning some individual. Please try to make a pull request so that uh, we can grow and take a feedback from this project and uh, increase and uh, effectiveness and uh, share with the knowledge of the Kubernetes security to the world. Right. Uh, some wall of love. Uh, quite a lot of love from the community, how this project helped and how it evolved uh, over the years. Uh, would love to grow this and uh, increase more awareness and stuff. Uh, this section going to be improved and uh, we would love to maintain like some of the focused areas like uh, CNC of tag security. This is quite active community managed by really good uh, people uh, across the cloud native and some of the places where you can learn some of the podcasts which you can learn and update. So we will try to keep up to date uh, around Kubernetes security resources and things. Uh, some of the love to all the people who contributed and improved the project, especially with the new changes and things. Uh, with that, 
I will go back to my slides. I think I'll wrap up the session. Uh, let me go back. Uh, sorry for not a lot of demos, but uh, due to the time. Uh, so what's next for the Kubernetes code, right? Uh, this is quite interesting because it has been growing quite a lot. So one thing we will be trying to focus is uh, all scenarios will be updated with more sections, which means it is trying to focus on other areas of use cases, how developers can leverage and learn from these scenarios. Uh, can they fix even in manifest when they write the code? Can they fix when they're writing application code itself, right? Uh, making sure updating and maintaining the great documentation which we are currently have and uh, 15 more uh, new scenarios is releasing this week and uh, definitely many more to come uh, sorry uh, many more to come and if you have any idea or suggestions please feel free to let us know uh, in the twitter or github issue or any place uh, there is a new uh, scripts are coming so that you can use one click setup for your own cloud providers to try out this project and uh, various test beds so that you can test multiple open source projects uh, which can leverage and see how effective they are with uh, the Kubernetes code and more integrations, right? And there is a very heavy push towards developers and DevOps and the non-security people learning experience, because if you can teach them Kubernetes security or security perspective of things, because they definitely understand way more technology than us, because they were day on day out with clusters and resources so that they can add much more value to the entire company or Kubernetes ecosystem by fixing them in a light, a uh, lot of earlier phases, right? And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, there is a lot of uh, roadmap is coming up. Uh, please watch out. Uh, please do spread the word of, uh, of your love to Kubernetes code, give it a try, uh, contribute and share if you have any suggestions, uh, spread the word in social media. By the way, we would love to print new stickers and t-shirts. Uh, hopefully we will try to share with the community uh, soon. Uh, thank you so much with that. Uh, for giving the opportunity. If you want to learn more or have some idea, I just wanted to say hi. I'll be in the Slack channel. Uh, thank you so much.